are at a typical used car dealer looking for a vehicle which I can drive while Christian takes my discovery apart unfortunately and a typical used car dealer has a trailer office and a parking lot and not much more and barely speaks German Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this episode, we're going to buy a backup vehicle for Vera's Land Rover Discovery 3. Oh my god. Hope you enjoy the video. Now you may wonder, why do you need a backup vehicle for a Land Rover Discovery? Well, actually, I think you don't wonder. It's very simple. If I want to take the body of this car and do multiple repairs at a time, the car is obviously disabled and then Vera doesn't stop complaining so it puts a lot of stress on me. And in order to eliminate this problem once and for all, I just simply bought a second car for me and her. So the Mercedes which we came for is a B-Class, has a lot of issues. The car looks good from the outside, the AC is not working and it's a dog car again for us it would be a good car but he wants too much so we're probably not gonna take it the question is test driving that mercedes b-class oh my god i hate it i hate it i hate everything he's doing oh shit <laughs> ah so the parking brake is not working it's not a problem <laughs> so i can't see where the car ends there is no car it's like flushed down what? Oh shit. My screen is overheating so God knows what um, what I'm filming now. <laughs> Owning a vehicle in Germany is one of the largest expenses next to your rent and food what you have in your life for people with regular income. And typically people in Germany buy extremely small cars with extremely small engines and they try to buy them new so that they don't have any repairs in order to get away cheap and to get away without any hassle. We are completely different from that mythology. We drive too expensive to own Land Rovers, expensive to own for other people, but because we do all our repairs ourselves, we never ever go to a car shop to get any work done. We would rather push the vehicle off a cliff before it will ever see a Land Rover shop. Now we're gonna get a third car and we apply the same policy. Instead of buying a tiny car new from the dealer so that we don't have any trouble, we bought a high mileage 2008 old Mercedes B-Class. This is the typical car what you can get in Germany relatively cheap because it's ready to be exported out of the country because normal owners cannot maintain this vehicle anymore. For us, the life of this vehicle just started. We'll change all major components. He's gonna get new brake discs, new brake pads, new spark plugs, new belts, everything new that needs to be new. What's and a spark plug? <laughs> And this car will also be utilized by our son, who is turning 18, getting his driver's license next year in May. Robin's driving will be mainly on the Autobahn. So a tiny car for a startup driver is, in our opinion, not a good idea, especially if he has to drive so much on the Autobahn. And that's why we decided to get a Mercedes. It has a decent size and it will be safe. It has multiple airbags, yeah. it has a lot of safety features, it has a certain mass and yeah. it has a small engine, a 1.5 liter gasoline engine. This car will provide adequate protection if you drive on the Autobahn and you get into an accident. Step one, getting the money. So how much do I need? A uh, thousand is good. German money looks like Monopoly money, yes. I know. Why are you counting this? Not even a drug dealer is counting the money so when he gets it. So and no, this no, came no. from a money machine. Oh, I lectured about money, let's go to step number two. Here, we're not looking at houses. Step two is getting gas for the car. 
it's so empty that I was surprised that it was still starting. And he's gonna put E10 in my diesel expedition fair fuel canister. Oh my god. It's 178. So E10 is much cheaper. Diesel is right now 203 on that gas station. So Okay, next yeah. stop, vehicle registration office. Registering a new vehicle or a used vehicle in Germany is an extremely complex process, but it's actually functioning if you have the correct documents. Which we don't have. Yes, we're missing the TÜV paper, but I talked to that lady and I was so charming that she said she's going to look it up in the computer using the same system the police uses. <laughs> Of course, you need an online made appointment, otherwise, don't even show up. Online registration, you have a barcode. You hold it still. And now I can take a seat. Digitalization. So you get called by a number. <laughs> that was easy. And now we gotta pay and get the plates. <sighs> oh, he's so fast. And you walk out of the registration office and here the license plate. Yeah, will be printed. you come from here and go into here. So the license plates are freshly printed here according to the vehicle requirements. So yeah. if you have a US vehicle, it's sometimes trouble, or if you have an SUV, it's yeah. sometimes trouble because the plates need to have a certain arrangement. And all this is very strictly specified in Germany. Yeah. So license plates are done. I think that was less than five minutes. 38 euros for the license plates. And we paid 49.50 for the vehicle registration. Now that was less than five minutes. So anybody who tells you that this is a problem in Germany, it's not true. Here we got now the license plates with the proper official stickers on it. We got the green tag, the title part two and the title part one. And see everything in Germany got these really important looking labels. <laughs> I'm still not okay with you taking my discovery apart. As soon as I have that car, your discovery will be separated body. No. I the typical it's used gone. car sales lot. Here it is. Window tires look really nice. Now look at that. It's a Mercedes. A clip is broken. Most importantly, here is a dent. Not that Christian's gonna blame me later for that dent. We bought it. The rust here is unfortunate. It's a Mercedes problem. The air conditioning is not working. That was already also here. That might be a problem. Once we have to get two for that car. I have to turn off my radio, otherwise the battery will be empty. Yeah, I cannot imagine myself driving that car forever. Thank God it's only for a couple of months. We got a new license plate holder. So, our brand new license plate. TÜV until May 23. That has to come off. That is, I think, Frankfurt. So the car is completely empty and we got 18.45 liters of E10. Don't make a mess here. So, the car has gas. So I'm in our new vehicle now. It's 172,000 kilometers on it and it's a 2008 Mercedes B-Class with the 1.5 liter Inseferia gasoline engine. The first thing I'm gonna have to do is fix the air conditioning because that's not working. We're also gonna have to get four new tires and the vehicle is in general in a decent condition for its age of 14 years. And it's a Mercedes, it's a pretty robust car. Almost like a Toyota, if not better in some cases. There she is behind us, you see her? So the gasoline consumption average over the last 27,000 kilometers was 7.6 liters with an average speed of 45 kilometers per hour. So this is not too bad. It would be nicer if it's like 6.5, but it just isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do an underbody inspection because I could not see the vehicle before at the dealer. There is a little bit of corrosion here, but only on the surface. 
there is absolutely no fluid loss. I mean, a Land Rover is not even that dry when it leaves the factory. It's only that dry before it gets its original filling. It doesn't have any scratches underneath, so it wasn't used for off-roading. And here is the parking brake, which doesn't work. And the sway bar here in the back is also horribly corroded here. Check this out. This is not looking too nice. We're gonna have to put some money in there. Okay, the brake line up here is corroded. TÜV's gonna complain about this. So we're gonna have to clean this up. What's in here? There is a tank. Oh, this tank looks corroded when I light in here. Button, oh my god. There's just a little bit of paint missing. Well, it's the fuel tank. I don't care. I don't know what's with him in that car, but he definitely loved it more than his discovery. It's raining a little bit. But when you work underneath your car, like Christian did here, painting and protecting the fuel tank, you won't get wrecked. But Christian started wearing a helmet because he hit his head so many times yeah. on the wheel. Okay, so did you feel my improved gas that? tank back here and my improved body mount there? Yeah. Oh, body mount. Oh, here too. Yeah. Exactly. But that all will be covered in black. We couldn't get any black paint uh, for underbody protection um, today. So. See, the parking brake doesn't work because I got it actually applied. But also here, parking brake isn't working. That's what you get for bringing your car to a workshop. First of all, this car was never in a Mercedes-Benz workshop. It was maintained its entire life from a tire shop. The tire shop stamped also all the service records. In one of the last service records, the tire shop um, replaced the rear brakes. Yeah. That was not long ago. And I had terrible squeaking noise with the rear brakes and the handbrake did not work. So I thought, well, this stuff's going to be all worn out. And I bought new discs, new pads and new shoes for it. Two severe mistakes what they did. First of all, this spring here maneuvered out of position. The reason that the parking brake didn't work is because they assembled the springs here wrong and the adjuster wheel is stuck. And the reason that the brakes didn't work right and wore uneven is because the shoes are stuck. And sometimes when you get the aftermarket shoes, you got to make sure they slide here nicely. So you take a file, you file yeah, a little we do. bit. We do that all the time. So they slide nicely in these sheet metal pieces. They didn't do that and they stuck. They completely stuck. You can see it wore unevenly. Yeah. So you can see here. Yeah, this ruined in a really short period of time. The disc brakes, of course, they ran hot because they got stuck. Really, really bad brake job. Um, to an extent, also dangerous. And that should be enough reason for you to not give a car into a workshop. Do it yourself. Take it over to your buddy who drives Toyota. You know, he does that every half a million mile. He knows yeah. how to do that. You may wonder why I'm working above ground <laughs> if I got a lift, okay? Because I'm used to it. It is for me, believe it or not, more comfortable to work like this where I can put my tools on the floor and have something for the dirt and I can kind of crouch here like this. Yeah, but look at that. Okay? Christian can do that. He can bend down like that and have the feet flat on the ground. I can't do that. For me, that's the yeah. most uncomfortable so, position there is. You can see that this spring also looks like the leaning tower from Teaser. I install new shoes, new shoe hardware, new discs, and new pads, and get rid of this old stuff. So, nicely installed anchor plate with springs, nice and shiny old Brembo. The disc brakes are brand new, and they are already rusty. So when it's humid, it's humid. And here we got brand new tires, Hancock. So I noticed here the hood is not sitting 100% in the center. And over here you can see it's rubbing here. And you can see it's sitting too far down. Pretty sure they taken this off one time and screwed it up as uh, people in the workshop screw things up. <laughs> yeah, no wonder it's not tight. Oh, look at that. What a perfect mechanism. 
Yeah, this one was also not very tight. So now I have to be really careful. But this looks now really good. That looks good. Let me go yeah. to the other side. That looks good. This That's good enough. This also a little bit open. Yeah. Look, oh my god. This is sitting on the glass here. You can see that they were open before by some dumbass. Why? I How don't know. And then they didn't adjust it correctly. That's also not for me. And I will be blamed for that later on. Well, that is, like I said, it's sitting too low. Yeah. Okay. And here there is the clip broken here. Yeah. And now I would need one more hand, but... Uh, I have one more hand. No, your hand is, in this case, not useful. Oh. Yeah, good. One. And this should go back on with two nice bolts. How it should be done in the first place. Ah, see it goes in. How is that? Very well. I tried to fix this light. And? But so far, with no, no luck. success. Maybe the cable is rotten. You're talking about a Mercedes Benz. This is not some Toyota or Land Rover. It's on. How about that? Also, what I fixed while you were gone is I adjusted all the gaps. You were complaining that you didn't do that. Yeah. See how this scratch here? Yeah. The hood was hitting or the, the hatch was hitting. See how I got now nice clearance here yeah. again? See how I got clearance here? But I couldn't get it to move over. Yeah, that so gap is still a little bit bigger, yeah, but, but that doesn't but, matter. But this could use a little bit of a... Uh, and here you can see the corner is actually protruding a little bit. Yeah. So I use these two bolts here and two bolts here. And then there is a bolt I could access from here. I think this is now fixed. Look at the body quality here. Look how this is made. Okay. The robot which applied this wow, bead. Wow, that is a welding bead. A nice That's welding. not a welding bead. This no? is a glue. Oh. This is glue applied by a robot. So this robot, cool. whoever programmed this, was beaten up so badly until he got his final acceptance from the Mercedes-Benz people that he probably committed suicide after this job. Right over here. This is so perfect. They had a problem with this door. Now, if you go over on the other door, there is nothing. Yeah. It's perfect. I cut this away so it's exposed. And I'm going to seal it from the inside. But now I want to put this stuff on here. It doesn't have any... Sound deafening, what's going on here? No, it, this cap here, what is that called? A hub? Hub cap. Hub center cap. And immediately the car looks like new. Yes, I only want steel wheels from now on, on my Discovery 3. Oh, look at that. Here's a Discovery 4. Here, here is a Discovery 3. Wait a second. And look at that. They tend to find each other. There's another Discovery 3, and it's not Fabian's. Made in China. Ah. Ah. You know, luckily the Chinese didn't spell it wrong or something. <laughs> I was checking the spelling. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> now that was the final thing. Now the car is done. But we just drained the oil. But not in the video. In the video, this was now done. Ah, okay. So happy that the car is in such a good condition after 14 years. <laughs> See this feature here? Never seen this in a car. So, so you can I... stick this safety belt in here Why? for storage if you want to. So when you flip these forward, remember how this was a problem oh. in the Defender we reviewed and it got stuck? Yeah. Doesn't happen on a Mercedes. True. And when I raise these up now, I have to remember to get the buckles out here because there is no spot for them to go. I see now that there is something I can lay them here on top. Now they will stay oh, on okay. top, okay? Yeah. So this was the engineering fix for that problem. We're gonna replace coolant fluid. I got two original packed Fabi coolant. Remember when we, when we had a Mercedes? Yeah, long time ago. Long time ago. This was now sitting for a long time. And yeah. it's still good? If it's in the original packing, it's still good. Yeah, it appears to be blue. The air filter, I inspected it. It's brand new. 
Okay. But I already bought a new one. Oh, we have to do the brakes. Okay. Do an oil change. We are right now not at the brakes. We are now under the bonnet. Okay. Yeah, I just saw the brake fluid uh, canister. Okay. Replace brake fluid. You are correct about that. That's dot four. We have that. Oh, we better get new one. But you just bought it. A year ago. What's the problem? It so collects we water. Gonna have to, we, we can't discuss now every <laughs> item, otherwise the video is going to be an hour. Okay. okay. Oil change. An oil change. Five W40. New spark plugs. Spark plugs. I ordered a manual yesterday on our drive spark home. Plugs. Then we need a... Oil filter. Oil filter. <laughs> No, you didn't. You just put oil change. We may need new wiper blades. I just see them. You brought me out of my concept. Air conditioning. So the AC already has a tracer inside the fluid. So we can use light tonight when it's dark. And look if we already find the leak. Now, anything else you can see here? I think we should change the belt. I would change the timing belt but Christian said no <laughs> it has a timing chain okay. it doesn't need to be changed a Mercedes Benz in 2008 already has light bulb diagnostics so if I pull the connector off here here you can see diagnostics for the light bulbs that's why we don't need to go around and check them all let's put the battery before everything else this was repaired in a real bad way. And look at the fabric I found. Look how freaking close that fabric is. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Oh, okay. Yeah, you so have to I take gonna, off the uh, seat cover no, and I can... No, we're gonna... I just gonna cut it out as nice as possible and glue it on. Yeah. So I got one side of the seats fixed and it looks really good in my opinion. It's nearly the same fabric. And uh, this is what it used to look like. Okay. okay. Here's the finished result. I mean, it was always driven by both people. Usually yes. only the driver's seat is broken. Yeah. yeah. They must have loved each other. <laughs> Not okay. like us, right? They were not married, that's for sure. <laughs> I want to buy a new shifter. Yeah, this but is, I, This yeah. is disgusting. After two hours? Yeah, it was more like one hour. Required some filing. It goes on here like this. Yep. See, it snaps in. It's going to be difficult to take it back off. And then this thing goes back on. A new shifter. Yes. Perfect. So we're going to put in a new Poland filter. Poland. Poland. Yeah. Not for the Polish, okay? No, it's for, for Poland. Uh... Oh, thank God you saw it. It yeah. wasn't me. But that's quite deep, so that's going to run. Whoa! Oh my God, that is installed like the one on the Freelander. Transaxle oil. Yeah, it's a transversely installed engine with a transaxle. Yeah, but I'm still traumatized by the time we had to replace the clutch on my okay. Freelander. Maybe. Oh, it has Z and Z. Yeah, it doesn't have coilovers. That stuff looks weird. That looks completely different than that. So you can write down take off Frankfurt sticker. Remove sticker. Got it. We take the light here. I take the light. I and I show you what the problem is. It's really annoying while driving because it causes vibration. See here. So the important step <laughs> is that when you do something like this, that Vera doesn't get hurt because she tends to stick her fingers in right in between when it does something. So hear it. Looks the same. Yeah. It looks completely different. It looks beautifully the same. Look. No. That is flat and that is not flat. And oh. that is is longer and that is oh. not so long. <laughs> we need 81.8 .8 newton meters. Okay. Did you like that click? Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, I do the second click. Click. That was two clicks. But why are you changing things now? Because... We always do click, click. Click, click. Oh. 
to get this amount of corrosion on him. Yeah, I he's not going to get shocks before I do. It's 70 Newton meters. 70 Newton meters for such a small bolt. Yeah, that could be possible. And of course it says use new bolts. Well, but you did? Of course not. But what do you mean there were no bolts with a new shock? Only new nuts. Oh my God. I'm checking the air conditioning system for leaks. There is a tracer in there and I'm using ultraviolet light. And if there is a leak somewhere here at the compressor, I would see that immediately. But this is looking all good. Let's see if we can see the condenser from here. There is a leak here. See how this lights up green? I hope that's visible on the camera. And you can see here there is a leak in the in the condenser there. So I took off the entire front on the Mercedes with my 83 year old dad because Vera is on a trip. And there is a leak right here and that's what we're fixing. So we are replacing it with uh, simply a new one right here. 114 euros from Mahle. So I got the front of the vehicle back together and it's all 100% cleaned. So now I can put the bumper back on. Oh my God, he's cleaning the inside with a power washer. He's completely nuts. Thank God it's not my car. He doesn't use any foam. No, all you guys want Vera to do. <laughs> In my bikini. LR Time Sticker in the Mall Crawler Edition. Christian told me he's got some great news. Now, you know your engine includes these kind of devices, okay? This is sort of like a glow plug, except the engine uses it in every ignition cycle what it's doing, because it's not a self-igniting engine, okay? This inferior type of engine has these devices, spark plugs, and they have a certain gap here. They need this gap so a spark can jump from the electrode to the outer piece. And I took them out of the Mercedes. And here, when I measure this gap, I have to stick a bunch of these shims in between. And there are so many shims that I have to measure them with the caliper. So we got a gap of 1.6 on these spark plugs. But the gap, according to the manufacturer, on a new one needs to be 0.9. So I got the new ones here and they are 0.9. So my hope is that these spark plugs were so worn out because they never got replaced. You know, you don't replace spark plugs on a Toyota or on a Mercedes. You don't do that. So that when I put the new ones in, that the engine is actually going to run quieter. And maybe that's my hope. It uses less gasoline. If you burn diesel, you don't need any of this garbage. So there is nothing you can see oh, because really? I can't even see anything. Okay. Christian hasn't found the oil filter yet. I bet I can see it before him. I don't have light. Oh my God. Down there. How are we going to get that one out? See how smart people install an oil filter? They install it low and not on top of the engine, like on a Land Rover, where the oil takes a decade to get there. I consider these guys smart people because they built the smart car. Right. Now, what I'm not 100% sure is that this is actually the engine oil. <gasps> Maybe I'm draining who knows what. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy cow. <gasps> so we have copper rings. Yes. So the oil fill plug gets torqued to 30 Newton meters. They simply print the Newton meters right on here. Yeah, that's smart. Oh, look, there's the, there's the rubber ring here. <laughs> it's like so your, your socket doesn't fall off. See it here? Yeah, what? That's, that's this ring. So your socket doesn't fall off. So you can put this on your socket like this. Wow. It's like changing a light bulb through a barn door. Oh, what an enjoyable click. So, I can lecture about oil again. Now, when you have a Land Rover and they specify 5W30 A5 B5, you are using the wrong oil because that oil did not even exist when the engine was designed. Only A3 B4 was around when the engine was designed. Now this car is a 2008, so a similar year. And they also specify 5W30 
at the time of build A3 B4. And what did Mercedes not do compared to Land Rover? They did not go up with the newer ACR grade after it became available. No, when you look at this engine today in the specification, it comes up with A3 B4, just like on the day it was built because these guys are not the kind of wimps like they are at Land Rover going with the latest oil on their fleet and make it look all good just so they have lower emissions. No, they keep their old vehicles with the same oil which was used when the vehicle was designed. So this one still gets a CR A3 B4 and not A5 B5. So I like that about Mercedes. But of course we are filling in 5W40 because we are just no 5W30 people. If you want to get 5W30 filled in, you got to go to a workshop. They're really good at doing that. Yeah, lecture. I can lecture over the entire duration while that oil flows in. No problem. It's going to start the engine now. So So while we added, we replaced the manual transmission oil, 1.8 liters. Here we go again. I'm stroking it. Oh my God, what was that? Probably just water. So apparently we have to take him on the lift to put in new wiper blades. Christian has a lift now, so he'll be using it for everything. He bought the cheapest ones available. Okay. Whoa. Done. Good. Now we're going to take him on a test drive and see if there is a difference. Okay, guys. So our Land Rover backup vehicle is complete. All we have to do now is wait for Vera's engine to fail. Oh my God. And then we are well prepared to take the body off. And I can tell you now, if it won't fail, I'll take the body off anyway. Because there are a couple of repairs which are due. One of them, for example, is the rear crankshaft seal. Um, the car has an oil leak there. Then the clutch, not the clutch itself, but the dual mass flywheel is really done. And do also some corrosion protection. Yes. And all this is now possible with our Land Rover backup vehicle, which we will later on give to our son next year in May. Now, this vehicle cost us in purchasing 3,000 euros off that dealer, and we put in about 1,000 euros on spare parts in total. I know this is not plausible because you did not see all the repairs we did in this video. If you want to see more detailed repairs on how we got this vehicle finished, please leave us a comment. Otherwise, this vehicle is not going to be the primary content in our channel. That noise what you hear is because I got the inside door cover off right now. Okay? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm fixing that rust spot. I'm still not done. So that's it for this week's short video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share and potentially subscribe. If you already subscribed, please don't unsubscribe just because we showed now a video about a small Mercedes. We also want to thank our patrons a lot for their support. They make these videos possible every week and we'll see you next Sunday. Very well. <laughs> I'm nearby Frankfurt meeting a subscriber and his doggy. Come here. Look how cute it is. It's a real Land Rover dog. Look at that. Huh? And he brought us parts, which he doesn't need anymore because he's got one of the best looking new discoveries I have ever seen. Look at that. Look at the tires and look at that winch. It looks so good, that car. Christian's going to blur out the license plate. And I'm so thankful for it because you can never have enough Land Rover parts, especially if you have two of them. And his daughter, Ella, has a YouTube channel. She is big into horses. Her YouTube channel is called Ella and Horses. And maybe if you want to check it out.